welcome to Let's Play Gran Turismo 3, episode 105. And where it is now time for us to get on with our second to last championship in the game, which is the Polyphony Digital Cup. And I already know exactly which characters I'm going to use. And so, you can basically do whatever the hell you want for your criticism, but this is a car I've wanted to use more or less since the start of the Professional League, and officially it's going to be this, the Dodge Viper GTS. And the reason why I chose this car, well, because this is a long championship, and I'm just going to get this thing, because I know very well that this will ultimately be probably the longest championship in the game. And well, just in case, I'm also going to get myself the racing slicks. And well, just because I want to, I'm also going to give this thing an oil change. And um, is it really worth it to change the rims? Eh, fuck it, let's do it. Sure, just to give this thing a little bit more personality. Hmm. Let's see, what is that? Yes, this will work. Okay, let's now head over to the event itself. So, over to the Professional League, as it is now time for our second to last championship in this game, the Polyphony Digital Cup. For the hardcore GT fan, all the peak races from each series. So, 10 race championship, as you would anticipate, and we are doing all of the reverse courses. And basically, the only way we can get money is if we win these races. So, 50 grand if we can win each of these races, equivalent to an overall total of 500,000 credits if we get a clean sweep. And we are doing all the reverse courses. So we've got Trial Mountain, Midfield, Rome, Route 5, Seattle, Apricot Hill, Deep Forest, Route 11, Grand Valley, and Tokyo for the final race. And well, because this is the super license events we're talking about, each of these events are officially 20 laps long. So from where the International A License Championship events, with the exception of the GT World Championship, are ultimately all 15 laps long, if you thought the Dream Car Championship was long, then you would be far from it in terms of how long this championship is, because all of these races are 20 laps long. And in this competition, it is nice to know I am the only Dodge Viper GTS in this field, or in other words, the only snack in this field. And the cars we're up against are Nissan Skyline, a Lancer Evo 6, Tommy Mackinnon Edition, a Nissan Z Concept, a Ford Mustang, and an Evo 6 RS. Alright, let's do this. so I can keep this thing going for probably the next two hours. <clears throat> However long it takes me to get up to race number four. Anyways, already off to a reasonable start as of which I've already manoeuvred my way 
quite valiantly up into second position and just now trying to see of course if I can pull off an overtake on the skyline as of which I do so successfully and already I'm now seven turns clear of the skyline as of which the Nissan Z is already up to the forefront of battling for second place and meanwhile I think the Mustang is right behind him unless the Mustang is uh, back there with the Evo 6 well, there are two Evo 6s in this event, but ok, well the Mustang hasn't made any maneuvers yet but I'm pretty sure he will manage to maneuver his way up to Probably third position before this race is done. And as I manage to avoid scraping the wall, the AI just immediately scraped it after the first chicane. Anyways, the Nissan Z has now moved up to second position in the space of just one full lap. Anyone for me. I am just very much holding station and pretty much running comfortably in first position in my black adder. Well, I think that's what it is because, well, because, well, the only real snakes that we have here in the UK are basically adders. And essentially, overall, since I don't think we have any vipers in the UK, I would say... The only real snake I can think of that probably is located in any part of the UK would probably have to be an adder. Well, since I'm driving this thing in black, I guess you could say it's a black adder. Because, well, you know. Also, the main reason why I chose to drive this thing in black as well, because... I've already driven this thing in both red and silver, so... I figured I would be more diverse with my choosing, and... Coincidentally, I would choose... The third colour that is available to me, and that of course is black. Very much the one thing that would probably make the Rolling Stones admire this, because it is basically a red viper that has been painted black. If you probably know the lines to the Rolling Stones song Painted Black, you probably know very well that the first one is... You probably know very well that the first line is, I see a red door and I want to paint it black. And I suppose you could say in some cases that's exactly what this thing essentially is. Alright, so... I'm now leading this by uh, under 5 seconds ahead of the Nisenzi. I think the other snack in this field, the Cobra, has now potentially moved up to third position ahead of the skyline. And, oddly enough, I'm pretty much extending by a second per sector up to this point in the race itself. <coughs> So, at the completion of three laps, all I can really say is that I am dominating this event. Up to 
to this point and the reason why I chose this car for this event, well, simply because I know how long this championship is. I know that it's probably four segments worth of recording, but the reason why I chose the Viper for this is simply because, well, I'm trying to reduce the amount of time it would take me using one of the cars in my garage. Or at least, a car in my garage that has less than 350 horses. And already up to this point, I'm now 7 seconds clear of the Nissan Z. And am I going to end up winning each of these races by a lap? Probably. Or at least I'll win 8, possibly 9 out of 10 of these races. because of myself using an overpowered car and also using super slick tyres. Although, then again, of course, it is basically an all-or-nothing championship. So that is the main reason why I'm trying to see if I can use a car that I know I will win all ten races in. And I think for this, I've probably made more or less a reasonable choice may not necessarily be the most agreeable choice by my viewers, but again, at the very least, it's a choice I can agree to, and at the same time, it's a choice I'm able to live with for pretty much a plethora of reasons as to why exactly I eventually chose this car to be my main one for this championship. And yes, one of the main ones is so it does not take me as long to complete this championship. Now the projected time that I'll probably get this championship done in is about six hours. But again, dependent on knowing if I'll actually succeed with this car or not, that remains to be seen. And knowing, of course, if I can manage to do this within the six hour barrier. I'm pretty sure there will be some flaws, and up to this point I've already had some flaws in my plan over knowing if this will actually work or not, but up to this point, I would personally say that at the moment I really don't care as long as I get through, as long as I manage to get through the championship in three segments, regardless of how long it will probably be. And already, I now have a 15 second interval to the Nissan Z concept, and I think up to this point, it's fair to say that I'm more or less extending my lead by pretty much a second per lap, at the very least. That's what it feels like. It feels like I'm extending my advantage by at least a second per lap. Here's what me thinks. So, and officially the Nissan Z has now made his first pit stop after six laps, and I would imagine the Mustang and the Skyline are both going to be close behind him. The skyline is probably pitting in the next lap, from what I can empathise, but up to this point, it's hard to imagine the mu sorry, the skyline holding on to second position up to this point, because 
is following the sun, the Z has already made his pit stop, and I'm pretty sure that he will probably be coming into the pits next time around. And so, up to this point in the race, I would think, and I think I just overwrapped for some reason. I think up to this point like I'm probably not gonna lose too much time over the rest of the field, considering I'll just keep, you know, extending my interval pretty much a second a lap a second per sector, more or less, because that's basically what I'm pulling away by. And I have a feeling that with this car, I can probably get this championship done in under six hours with my segmentations. And I'm hopeful in saying that this will be where I can start a string of me winning every single race in the Polyphony Digital Cup overall. So, through the right-hander once again, right before the hairpin which is literally centred here in the tunnel. Though it seems pretty weird on how it just literally becomes a sudden drop afterwards. And having to shift right on the line of the red sector so that I'm not over revving the gears. And that's all. And yes, I am trying to see if I am able to physically improve on my P bake. So, 42.8 seconds is now the interval to the Nissan Z, from what I can understand. The Mustang looks like he is very much got a firm grip on third place by now, and that's a wall. So I would reckon the top three in this championship will be virtually unchallenged. But again, it'll depend on knowing if if I can actually feel like I'm not being a pessimist. And furthermore, yes, I did of course decide to be the arsehole in this and just go for one of the obvious choices, but again. Because of how little time I have at the moment, the most of the time I'm recording this, because well, it's pretty much mid-September right now, at the time of me recording this. So, overall, I do not really have too much time on my hands to get this game done with, because I have college work that I need to get through. And at the moment, I am really not concentrating on my lap times. Because the lap times I'm setting at the moment are actually quite mediocre in comparison to my best lap time at the moment, because I'm making too many mistakes. And I should probably stop doing that. And I am going to try and stop doing just so I can focus on trying to see if it's possible for me to perfect at least one, maybe even two of these laps. But yeah, I basically knew this was going to be the sort of competition I'd really be up against. But again, on the whole... Oh, fuck me. 
I just hit the rocks. Why did I have to do that? I guess that's just because of how purely I'm basically making an abundance of mistakes as it currently stands. It's virtually an abundance of mistakes that I'm currently having to negotiate with here. And at the moment, I'm just driving fucking terrible. In terms of the lap times that I've been setting recently, because by pure comparison, I think I think the lap times I've set in comparison to my personal best have just been terrible. However, there might be a way for me to claw back some of that lost time if I'm able to concentrate on where exactly my car is positioned. It just depends on knowing if I can actually manage to find a gap where there is a multiple to be found. And, oh, okay. Well, I guess that one there just answered my questions. And that was a much smoother entry through there. Okay, I think I'm starting to get myself back on track what it is I'm meant to be doing in terms of going for PBs. Let's just wait and see what happens. Also, furthermore, I forgot to tell you this at the start of the LP. Why did I shift down to second? Really does not show the best signs of optimism. Anyways, one thing I forgot to tell you at the start of the segment about this cup is that, well, it is for non-tuned cars only, so that is the main reason why I chose the Viper. So I simply chose the Viper because, well, I figured for... I figured because I knew there were going to be relegations going into this championship compared to the others, I figured this would probably be the card that I would use, just so I can get through the races. Pretty much, you know, objectively and quickly. In comparison, of course, to many other It feels weird on how there are certain areas where I'm over revving, but yet there are certain areas where I'm not on the course where I'm not over revving as much. Yeah, it's just weird when I do that. But again, I am trying to see if it's possible for me to improve on my best lap time. I am trying to see if that's, you know, at all possible. the Mustang is now once again hits. The skyline is going to take over 
third position very briefly, as I would noticeably anticipate. And I still click the wall. Game me for not having the game face on. I know that I really have any points in putting on the game face because, well, I am more or less. I'm pretty sure that up to this point, I'm not going to be challenged for the lead over everything that I've already seen. And it appears as though from here, like there really isn't going to be much else I can really do. Except for just try and... Except for, you know, just trying to put a lap on the rest of the field and... just put myself in the seat. But more or less being... Professional, professional enough as a gamer to not necessarily be, you know, accident prone. Even though the truth is with me, I'm very much accident prone with the countless number of mistakes I make in video games. It's almost like in some cases I'm just not able to officially understand what the purpose of the situation really is. sure it will take me about less than I'm pretty sure this race will take me somewhere over half an hour to get through the first one because each of these races I'm confident in saying about 20 laps long and most of them will take me at least half an hour to get through or at least somewhere between 31 and 35 minutes for most of these races dependent on how big the track is. Although at the moment of course I can definitely say that I'm trying to push for a sub-133 time even then of course if I don't think I'm going to get it Although, other than that, of course, the higher revs I give on the tachometer, the more chances I have of increasing my speed down the streets. And I think I gave it a bit too much. I think that's just what cost it me. But again, it is something that I'm trying to achieve, even then of course if it's not, you know, necessarily what... Even then of course if it's not necessarily what... the Marine Corps would consider A valiant effort. Oh shit! I just got fucking airborne there. I was literally airborne as I came off. 
I was literally at one as I came off the bump. I was virtually airborne. There was literally nothing I could have done about it. I was just literally airborne. My car just fucking launched off the entry of that chicane. It just literally launched. Just literally rocket launched is what it did. Just literally launched like a rocket. Once I got on that jump. Whoa! Jesus! I had no idea I was going to save that. That could have easily gone a lot worse than I anticipated. And it doesn't look like I'm going to set a sub-132 time because... It appears as though my tyres are getting worn up to this point and... I am trying my hardest not to cheat search for the on-track intervals, but again, I've basically been cheating anyway because I've been cutting corners. Just trying to see if I can find out where that time is yet to be found, and I just did it again. I just... I just cut the chicane once again because... Although then again, of course, I am closing in. Although then again, I have noticed that I am closing in on the Nissan, so I'm not losing too much time. As a current stance. Although the main thing that I'm really trying to do right now. Although Although the main thing that I am trying to accomplish right now is trying to see if I can give myself, you know, enough optimism. To prove that I'm ready to showcase myself. And you know, just literally sending it. Although at the moment I don't think that's going to be the case because... Oh, fuck me! Fuck! That's a walk. And, yep, okay. I just fucked up the entry to the start of the Benalt. I'm sorry me for being accident prone. Why can I not just overlap the Z? I should have done. Come on. Don't choke, don't choke, don't choke, don't choke. Please don't choke. Although then again, I'm basically going to overlap the Z anyway because I know very well that we were pit in at the end of this lap. Because he's basically pitting in every six laps, and I'm pretty sure the optimism that I have in saying he's going to pit this time around is pretty much paramount, I would say. To be completely honest. I think it's fair to say that my front tyres are starting to show some signs of wear. Tyre wear, I might add. Which is probably the main reason why I'm not able to get the turn in that I want. Just to go straight into these corners. Right, he's in the pits. Let's now try and see if I can push for a faster slap. And I'm already off to a tremendous start. Because I am already cutting the chicane. 
And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to set a sub-133 on the state that my tyres are currently in. But again... There really is no use in falling for complacencies. I might as well go for it anyway, see how much time I can gain. Potentially even see if it's possible for me to achieve. Potentially even see if it's possible for me to achieve anywhere close to a sub-133. certain this will not be a personal best, no matter how hard I try. But my tyres are not in the state of should be. And to prove that, I just decided to cross the line. Anyways, waiting for everyone else. Alright, there we are. So in the end of that, I basically overlapped the rest of the competition, even though I did finish this race on virtually worn tyres. Excuse me. I pretty much pulled off... I pretty much managed to pull off a Kimi Raikkonen in that instance, just literally managing to nurse the car home on worn tyres. Was that a Sebastian Vettel when I say that? Well, no, anyways. 10 points to me, 6 to the Nissan Z, 4 to the Mustang, 3 to the Skyline, 2 to the Striped Evo 6, and 1 point to the RS Evo 6. And 50,000 credits for winning a race. By God, that is a lot. It's probably also the most money that we can win from a championship race in this game. Yeah, you see, I thought for sure there was something I had to do, but then I realised that since I was already in on the race up, in on the race itself, there really wasn't anything else I could or should have done because I've already got all the equipment I need right here, and up to this point, of course, I would say. I would say things are going quite well at the moment. So, already overtaking the Evo 6 and up into first position I go. Yeah. And up into first position I go as it looked as though the Mustang almost became victimised to the gravel trap there, but. Again, I've noticed the AI, the AI tend to do that quite a lot on the reverse circuit, in my honest opinion. They often tend to do that quite a lot. Just basically run on the high line. And then try and see if they're able to, you know, power slide themselves through the corners. Meanwhile, end of lap one, and I have already opened myself up to what is pretty much, more or less, a dominating performance. And already... And already... Jostling is beginning to happen amongst the AI. So they're really jostling for position at the moment literally trying to fight it out. I think the Z is trying to move himself up to... Second, is it? No. Well, it doesn't matter because that's exactly what he's already done. And he is five and a half seconds behind me. That is literally how much I am dominating this event. And I'm going to continue. Yeah. 
Also, Voldemort. In terms of colours, I think I did make a right choice to get this thing in black because everyone else is basically racing in either in either red, orange, or white for this championship. So I would say, regarding the circumstances, I actually made a good choice to be independent. I think I could have got a sub 1 minute 33 time at Trial Mountain had I not made had I not made as many mistakes as I did in the later stages of that race. I think I could have got a sub 1 minute 33 time if I really had the balls to do it. But again, because I had discovered I did not have the tyres to do it, that was precisely where most of my time was lost. But it's fine, because I did manage to nurse the car home on the worn tyres, and I did also manage to... And I did also manage to do a donut as I went across the line. So, up to this point, three laps have now been completed, and is this going to be a new PB? Yes it is, of a 1 minute 19.7. So, three laps are complete and still 17 to go. I very much remain optimal at the moment that I will probably end up leading the rest of this race and probably overlapping the entire field at least once before the end of the day, considering that is basically what I achieved at Trial Mountain once the Nissan Z had officially made his final pit stop, as of which he did make a total of three pit stops during that race. At the moment, of course, I would say I'm doing pretty well. And... So, I now have an 18 second lead over the Nissan Z. And is this going to be an improvement over my personal best? Yes, it is. And the only real question I have is... I have now is... Can I set a sub 1 minute 19? set anywhere in connection to a potentially high 1 minute 18 time, which is technically what I'm trying to target myself for, but I think I can do it, it's just a matter of knowing if I have the confidence to do it, as well as the speed. Let us see what happens. Sorry, we shall see what happens. Alright, so now we've got a more or less 22, sorry, 23 second gap to the Nissan Z as it currently stands. Really don't think there's going to be anything else to do from here, but again, I will still manage to try and see if it's possible. For me to set a sub 119, which does seem like a big ask up to this point, but I might be able to do it if I can limit the mistakes. We will just have to wait and see. And then once I've done that, I can basically just... more or less... I 
And once I've done that, I can more or less... ...just do what exactly I've been doing. Let's see what happens. Is this going to be a good lap time that I'm setting here? Well, not far off. But again, I still think there are two tenths I need to find if I'm going to improve on that. And I'm pretty sure I'm not meant to do that if I'm trying to go for a PP. Personal bust. Anyways, at the completion of six laps, the Z is now already in the pits. And I would imagine the Mustang is going to be pitting in next time around, and then it will be the Skyline that pits in on lap eight. Shifting up into 5th gear really, so that I'm not sliding into the wall. And through the final corner we go, it's more or less banked. It's more or less a banked corner on the reverse circuit. Things you don't seem to notice when you're driving the former course. And I did manage to improve on that, but it wasn't a sub-119. I'm still in the low 119s, but I don't think I'm necessarily, you know... But I wouldn't necessarily say I'm quick enough for a sub 119. Even though I am trying my hardest to go for that. I guess it's only really a matter of knowing IF I can go for it. So... At the moment, it more or less looks like everything is falling into place. But it just depends on knowing, of course, if I can manage to find those improvements I'm looking for. And furthermore, yes, the downshift as I got on the exit of that chicane was more than necessary. Already. And there we go. I've done what I needed to do. I set a sub 1 minute 19 time. Just the sort of time I have been wanting to set more or less always long. And now I can basically relax for the rest of the run. I do not have to go any faster than I already have done. Because a 1 minute 18 is all I really care about. I mean, I'm basically just dominating these races anyway, but again, this probably is the best decision I have up to this point. It's like there really isn't anything else I can do at the forefront. Passing the Tommy Mackinnon Edition Evo 6. As it now looks like I'm getting a slipstream from the Mustang, who does now manoeuvre himself back up into second position. Both of us are virtually sliding our way through turns 1 and 2. A little bit of contact there. The two snacks have collided, but again, it's nothing serious because 
I'm overlapping. And again, because all because I figured all of these races were 20 laps long, that was the main reason why I had to go with the Viper. Because then I knew it would not take me too long to get through each of these races. So, I now lead by nearly an entire lap over the rest of the field. <sighs> okay. And I should probably also mention that this event is only for is only for normal cars, it's not for tuned cars unfortunately. This is basically the only other event besides the Trial Mountain 2 hour endurance that has a restriction on what type of tuning you can use. At least this is the only other event where tuning is, you know. At least I think this is the only other event in the game. Besides the Trinal Mountain Endurance, where tuning is not. Where tuning, except for the tyres, is not. He, got, he goes very deep into the corner, certainly went deeper than I would, probably because he has the better brakes. Probably because he has the better brakes and the lighter car for the job. But, at the moment, I can safely say that I'm now a lap ahead of the rest of the field. So, more or less repeating the optimal success that I had at Triumph Mountain, just basically overlapping the rest of the field and just going onwards to pretty much, you know, dominate the rest of the event. Twelve laps have now been completed. I'm pretty sure this race will more or less take me about somewhere under 25 minutes to complete. Which means, of course, that this will probably be the shortest race of the championship because we are at midfield. And, mid and midfield is one of the shorter tracks in this game compared to all the others. Oddly enough, my new, my new best lap time is now pretty much well within the teams. Although, I'm not being optimistic because I'm trying my hardest not to achieve those sorts of lap times again, but... Um, 
on the basis of everything that has already happened up to this point. And more or less just trying to, you know, cruise at home. I think in potentially every race before this is done, I might overlap the entire field in every race, if my car is really that dominant compared to all of the others. And the reason why I chose to use this car, though, because I had this, I had this thing on the cards since the start of the game. I was wondering whether I would or would not use it. And then in the end I eventually decided that that's what I would eventually do. And now as a result, I can safely say I made probably one of the easiest choices in the book. Fourteen laps are now on the board, and still have another five to go after this one. And I think because of pit stops, the field has more or less been separated. It's basically an endurance event up to this point. And I'm pretty sure everything else that has happened up to this point is more or less at a distance. I would think it's only a matter of time before my oil light turns red. Anyways, five laps to go. And then once I've completed those five laps... is down and still eight to go. Though since I'm making this a three-part championship, it's two races to go for part one. Also furthermore, I know I wouldn't necessarily consider that to be a good thing because well, I'm out leading the event and if I fall asleep now once the race itself is still running, I could very well lose the lead. Although, if I stay awake, I would imagine I'll probably still run the race anyway because I've got a full lap on the entire field. I'm pretty sure for probably half of the field, at the very least, it will be potentially two laps before this race is done. And even though this thing is hard on tyres, at the very least, I can say this is where I will probably manage to hold on to the optimal advantage. <sighs> because I am recording this in the evening. And I can safely say that because... Oh, okay, it's quite sick. I won't. 
not interfere with that. And it looks as though the skyline has now made what is officially going to be the second and final pit stop of the race. Because I'm pretty sure he came in on lap 8 originally and he pitted in again at the end of lap 15. Meanwhile, I now have just two laps to go after this one and then it will officially be the end of race 2. Which I will have won in pretty much, you know, dominating fashion. this point, I can now safely say that I have pretty much two laps on most of the field except for the leader, who is in fact well, the leader amongst the AI, which is in fact Hello Mr. Cobra which is in fact held by, you guessed it, in the same seat. And I'm pretty sure I will not manage to overlap him twice. Although it really doesn't matter because, well, since I knew midfield was going to be a course where I would have the benefits anyway, not the forward course, but again, still midfield in a way, because of how predominant my overall performances have been around midfield in the past. I would say, up to this point, I've managed to successfully keep a firm edge over the rest of the field. Anyways final lap, and we have now passed the 25 minute mark, so in the course that this race will probably take me somewhere under or just about 27 minutes before this race is done. that this is probably what the rest of the championship is going to look like. the final corner now and heading across the line and it is two wins to the final. Alright, there we go. Everyone has finished. And in the end of that race, I nearly overlapped the entire field twice. Race. I was so close to overlapping the Nissan Z twice in that race once he made his pit stop. Although then again I wouldn't have made it anyway because pure coincidence, but anyways, these are the point standings now after I have pretty much decimated the field in the first two races. The Nissan Z is second with twelve points, Mustang holds on to third and the skyline holds on to fourth, and the only real 
battle that we have at the moment is between the two Lancer Uvos. And they're basically in a tie at the moment. And the reason why I've not saved a replay yet is because I'm pretty sure that I already have replays saved at both Trine Lantern Reverse and Midfield Reverse. If you can remember the two previous segments I did. Before this one. So here we are now, race number three is it? Yeah. Race number three and already I'm looking more or less certain to winning. Probably every race in this championship. And I'm not gonna take any risks at the moment. Just gonna try and look for an opening. Not be aggressive on just punting the AI out of the way so I can move up. Just trying to slot my way through the field as a witch. That is exactly what I just do. So, I've already manoeuvred up to first position in the short time of just about half a lap. And at the moment, I have got two Nissans. Right on my ass. And I get a nudge. A quite aggressive nudge, if you ask me, but again, still a nudge, regardless of whatever the circumstances might be. Meanwhile, it appears as though. The skyline is going to get shuffled back to fourth, as I would imagine, and the Mustang is going to move up to third with the Z up to second, or with the Z holding on to second, I should say. And I am stepping on the brakes too early. Although, at the moment, of course, I would say everything is more or less going as I anticipated. As of which, this thing overall is pretty quiet. Although, the only real reason for that is because, well, I turned down the in-game volume so that the mighty V10 engine would not be blasting my ears. And I'm pretty sure this thing has a low revving V10 in terms of what engine it has because most muscle cars usually have V8 engines, but I'm pretty sure this one has a V10. Because, well, Chrysler at the time was owned by Mercedes, and I'm also pretty sure, of course, that this V10 engine is technically a Mercedes engine. And it now looks as though I probably will separate myself from the rest of the field up to this point. <coughs> and I would think that even though my throat is drying up now, so suddenly, so suddenly, even though my throat is starting to dry up once again because of the commentary I'm trying to deliver, at the moment, I would say. I'm doing more or less what I would consider to be a good job. Even though it's not necessarily the best job because I'm still continuing to break too early for the first right hander. I should probably be a little later on the brakes than I'm currently being, but eh. Really don't care too much. I mean, my oil light is basically going to turn red by the time I've done about 185 miles, which realistically is about 298 kilometers. And yes, 
nice. It would be nice if I could change it into the Imperial units from when, from once this game had metric units. Although, oddly enough, of course, in GT4 you could basically do, you could basically do just that. You could basically change the units from metric to Imperial. Although, unfortunately for this game, however, you cannot do that. You, unfortunately, are not able to do that. <coughs> you, of course, are not able to do that. Yeah, I'd say that was around about the right time for me to step on the brakes. Also, yes, I was attempting to clear my throat. Anyways. Three, lap three laps are now in the books, and ultimately, overall, optimism is high. And when I say that, I mean optimism is high enough for me to say how or when exactly I'm going to win this race. So, into the right hander once again. I think I used a little bit too much of the brakes through there because I was hooked on that inside line. I don't think I cut the course, but I definitely saw myself saw myself on the curbs the way I can see it. 12.8 seconds is now the interval. And I should not have shifted down to... third gear. But somehow I still did because I hit the outside wall. Which I more or less knew I was going to do inevitable. Wink, wink. Because I knew that was going to happen. Anyways. So yeah, basically what it is I'm trying to do here is trying to see if I can achieve doing this is basically trying to see if I can achieve doing this I talk about again. Yeah, it'll come back to me. Yeah, I thought for sure I was going to say something, but in the end I just realised it's probably best if I don't. Because I will just sound like I'm an idiot. Even though in some cases that is technically what I am. At least I know there wasn't any understeer, because if I had understeer from this thing, I would have probably gone straight into the wall. And up to this point... I would say... More or less doing what exactly the expectations are for rest of this championship. I am more or less doing what my expectations tell me to do. Which is just, you know,
taking the lead early and then just dominating the rest of the course. Oh, by the way, I think I think one of Dale Earnhardt's nicknames was the Dominator all the time. Because there, because there were times where he used to dominate races in this car. I mean, I don't know if that speculation is true, but I think one of the Intimidator's former nicknames was the Dominator. I mean, do correct. I mean, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was. one of Dale Senior's nicknames, and I do mean Dale Bernhardt Senior when I say that. Even though I'm pretty sure the last time an NASCAR competitor did manage to win an entire race by a lap, as what was it? 1994, the last time a NASCAR competitor managed to win a race a full lap ahead of the rest of the competition, or at least where a race winner had overlapped every other competitor. That was in the race itself. I do also know the driver as well. I believe the driver who achieved that was Jeff Bodine, and, well, I believe the driver who achieved that was Jeff Bodine, and I'm pretty sure... Oh, I just went pretty much a second faster on that lap. Anyways, I'm pretty sure the race winner was Jeff Bodine, and I'm pretty sure the last time that did happen was 1994 at North Wilkesboro. Why am I how NASCAR has changed since its success in the mid-90s? Although, it would literally be probably one of the most ironic coincidences if Texas Motor Speedway, which is technically the track that replaced North Wilkesboro, former glory, if North Wilkesboro effectively became the track that replaced, that effectively, you know, re-replaced the Texas Motor Speedway. I mean, originally, I had no problems with Texas Motor Speedway. I thought that circuit itself was pretty much, was pretty much identical to Charlotte Motor Speedway, but again, the circuit itself had really lost it's lost uh, once the bankings were lowered, and the racing itself just literally became, well, dreadful, basically. When they lowered the bankings at Texas, they basically made the racing dreadful once they did that. So, you know, it is what it is, I guess, is all I can really say. Anyways, eight laps are done, and we still have another 11 to go after this one. Easily made the overrated choice for this championship, even though I could have bought myself another Japanese sports car if I really wanted to, but again, I chose to use this thing because I know very well how long this championship is, and I also know very well that this championship is effectively the second longest in the game, and it will take me about at least six hours to get through this championship before. But that's also why 
I figured I would separate this into four. So if I so if I'm lucky with this, I may be able to get at least two hours for each of these segments that I'm doing based on the polyphony digital cup in itself. Which by the way I would also like to remind you is the second to last championship in this game. In other words, the penultimate championship of this game. And I'm pretty sure the final championship will undeniably be Formula GT. And that of course will be coming after I've cleaned up the races which, well, I basically didn't win. Essentially. Already coming up to overlapping the skyline now, even though he is not wanting to go that lap down, but again, he will inevitably go a lap down before this race is done. It's virtually unavoidable. From that, I can hypothesize. Seems as though at the moment, like the skyline is currently behind both of the Evo sixes. At least that's the way it looks to me at the moment. Although I could be wrong. Considering I am basically nearly an entire lap ahead of the rest of the field. But yeah. I really don't know what this guy is about. Or what exactly he's doing. Although I'm pretty sure at the moment he is at the back of the pack. And ironically enough, both of the Evo 6s at the moment are actually running ahead of the Skyline at the moment, it looks like. Although I do wonder if the Skyline has actually made a pit stop yet. Because that could play in conjunction to why exactly he's currently running last. And he's basically just waiting for the rest of the field to pit, essentially. And I did not want to do that. Oh, okay. Well, the Evo 6 is already in the place, at least the first of those. And at the moment I'm not really doing a good job at keeping the car off the walls. Ah, oh, damn it. I should have known that was not going to work. Come on. Focus on the road. It's not 2016, it's 2021. on the road, not everything has to be crazy. As I am now coming up to overlapping my fellow snack once again, which is the Mustang. And it's not really fighting me too much. It appears as though he's just letting me go. the alliance of the two snacks, as far as I can work out, and officially, all I have to overlap now is the missile. This car very much having the conspiracy to more or less overlap the 
with this car more or less having the conspiracy to overlap the rest of the field during each of these races. And I really cannot say this is protestable. I'm not cheating, I'm just winning too easily, is all I'm really doing. Some of you are probably against this idea, but again, many others, if you essentially have an overbooked schedule at the moment like I do, then you basically know very well the only thing you're really trying to do is just get this game said and done with and then just get on with everything else that is surrounding you before you play, before you start playing the next game. going quite well, from what I can understand. I'm pretty sure this will be another one of those races where I once again overlap the entire field, because that is just the sort of how you would say Lewis Hamilton-like domination I've had recently. Because whenever Lewis Hamilton usually leads a race, he usually tends to dominate. If he has no challenges or oppositions. The one thing which I ultimately think One thing which I'm ultimately thinking is something I would like to see myself. Although oddly enough, since this is 2021, it is something that has been happening with us. With there being recent changes to the regulations and it, but it actually making for a closer competition. Which is one word that F1 has probably not heard for at least nine years. One word which I think F1 has not officially heard of for at least nine years. At least in terms of constructors and drivers that can actually challenge a reigning world champion from a different team. Although, oddly enough of course, although oddly enough of course, F1 in the 2010s was basically dominated by either Red Bull or Mercedes anyway, because, well, by the time 2014 came around, Mercedes were just pretty much stonking the rest of the field. They clearly had the car to beat. There was no question that they were going to be dominant for most of those seasons. And yet, the only real team that's actually managing to put up a fight to them right now in terms of in terms of race wins is basically Red Bull. But yet, because Red Bull up to this point in the season has not necessarily has not necessarily been living up to the expectations they thought they were meant to live up to, they basically know very well that up to this point in the season where it really counts, this could be where Mercedes outfox their rivals again. Which is basically something they've been doing since the start of the V6 era. And yet, the only real driver that's actually managed to come down to a title fight in the V6 era, and the only driver that's actually managed to take a championship battle down to the wire up to this point, I just remembered they both went 
seven laps on the sets of tyres. Anyways. But yeah, I mean, the only real driver up to this point in F1's current era, which is basically the hybrid V6 era, the only real driver that's actually managed to throw even a gauntlet to Lewis Hamilton up to this point is Nico Rosberg. And well, I'm more or less hoping that Max Verstappen, if he can limit the mistakes that he's currently been making, then maybe he might be able to take the championship fight down to the wire with Lewis. Now, in terms of constructors, I would think Mercedes are probably going to be untouchable for another season, maybe, but we'll just have to wait and see if Red Bull can come back consistently because they don't necessarily need to win every one of the remaining races to get back in the championship. They just need to be more consistent than they have been, you know, recently. Yeah. Although, then again, of course, I can understand the optimism Verstappen has, sorry, Verstappen has up to this point. I mean, he's still young, he does have optimism, and I think it is fair to say... What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word is, but if Max can essentially be, you know, less prone to making the mistakes that he has been making this season, then maybe he might be able to, you know, possibly throw a gauntlet at the likes of at the likes of Hamilton before the end of the season. I think it's pretty clear up to this point that many people that many people after like pretty much four seasons of domination many people have more or less had enough of Lewis Hamilton just dominating the championship and going pretty much every year unchallenged without any opposition that is there to that is there to fight him that literally you know combatant rank. Or at least put up, you know, neglect of some sort. Or at least, you know, neglect towards his domination. I mean, the championship interval hasn't changed, but, you know. If there is at least someone out there who was able to challenge him week in, week out for race wins, but it's not always Lewis just basically stealing the show every week like, like he's been used to doing. And I'm hopeful in saying that Max Verstappen will hopefully that Max Verstappen will hopefully be the man that manages to put up a fight in the boxing rink. Now, I don't know what the word is I'm thinking of, but I'll probably have to search for it on the internet. See what word it is exactly I'm looking for. And I'm trying not to sound, you know, detrimental towards everything that's already happened this season, but again, I'm just hoping this season will have 
a championship that can be fought for pretty much, you know, week in, week out. Although it is nice to see, of course, that Lewis did have a DNF for the first time in over three years. Which, oddly enough, is one thing up to this point that he was long overdue for. And many people were basically waiting to see how long it would be before that happened. And I just hit the back of the Evo 6 once again. Anyways, down the inside of the Evo 6. And, yep, okay. I just fucked up right before the final lap. Because the Evo 6 was not... Considering I should probably remind you, these AI just don't give a shit if you're alive or dead. They will still do whatever it takes to just forcefully take you out of a race and literally do whatever it damn well fucking takes to win a race. It's just what they do. Although at the very least I'm pretty sure that I don't have to wait too long for the striped Evo 6 to finish the race, because... I just put in two laps down. That will probably be the only car that I put two laps down in this race. So, coming through the final sequence of corners. And... Is that the Skyline I see there? I think it probably is. The Skyline looks like it's going to finish in fifth, and... Okay, keep it straight, keep it straight. Okay. Anyways, I win. Again. Alright, everyone has finished, and in the end of that I put the striped Evo 6 two laps down, and everyone else finished one lap down. And also furthermore, GG's to the RS Evo 6 for finishing fourth in this race, which does now mean of course that will ultimately elevate him to fourth position in the standings. So in the end of that, no real change for the top three in points, as of which both myself and the Nissan Z look like we're going to be on course to having a perfect string of golds and silvers throughout this championship. Myself, of course, being the dominator. And, um, actually, yeah, let's save this replay. Just because... I want to. Yeah, I think this is part 105, as far as I know. Yeah, it is. Okay. And, let's now move onwards to... the fourth race... of the Polyphony Digital Cup. Which takes place at Route 5. Let's do this. I'm still good. Probably from that microwave chicken burger I had earlier. Well, it's either that or I'm just drinking a lot of water. Just to keep my voice going. And already. I can see where exactly speed is due, because I am already up to first position immediately, and because this is special stage route 5, 
I am guaranteed to win this race by at least a lot. Because the AI do not seem to have the competence you would expect from a round this circuit. And well, because it is once again another run of 20 laps, I am pretty sure this will take me. At least 25 minutes to get through the entirety of this race. Because we are going 20 laps once again around this circuit. And I am pretty sure this is very much the epitome of what I think is going to happen. Because this is Route 5 reverse, and I'm pretty certain. This circuit will easily be another one where I just easily dominate the race from start to finish. The reason I know this is going to happen is simply because the AI's competence around this circuit, like it is at Monaco, it is quite lackluster. Although, then again, I haven't actually saved a group like that. Route 5 recently, so... I suppose I could... ...replace the replay image that I had... ...that I have of Rome, because I did of course do the... ...because Rome, of course, was one of the tracks in the endurance events. So... I think this probably could be my you know, optimal choice to saving this replay instead of the one I already saved. I think I might actually do that because I don't think I have that many replays saved at Route 5 Reverse. At least not any, you know, more recent ones. I've saved up to this point. Although, dependent on knowing if I'll actually be able to, you know, get a good replay of this thing without, uh, without being a pessimist. Test. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Fuck my brains. My brains are just fucking fried at the moment. I'm just not thinking straight at the moment. Just not thinking straightly enough to get my words together. Three laps are done, and still 17 to go. I am more or less certain this will probably be virtually the epitome, the perfect example of how this championship has gone for me, and also about how boring it might be, you know, for the viewers. Because I'm just not and most of the time I try to do these things for entertainment purposes, but even though this might not necessarily be for entertainment, at the very least for me it's still more than very much an easy ride. Let me just... Let me just... 
just staying out in front and just being unchallenged. Yeah. I mean, going back to the Formula One topic that I was in cross reference to earlier on, it would be nice if we could have. The 2021 championship go down to the wire, which oddly enough is one thing we've not officially seen for about, yeah, for about five years now. And it would be nice if this would be the first time since then that a championship has actually managed to go down to the wire. Considering, like I said before, Nico Rosberg at the moment is the only man that's officially defeated Hamilton in a championship war recently. At least in terms of, you know, the past five years before Nico suddenly pulled his gloves out of the rink. Or out of the ring, I should say. He basically chose to retire once he won the championship. Which, well, oddly enough, is one thing you don't tend to see very often. Because you would expect a driver who becomes a world champion to go at least one more season in there. Basically, if their final season turns out to be terrible, they just decide to basically hang up the gloves after having a post-championship season that probably turns out to be terrible. But yeah, at the moment, the only driver who has managed to successfully beat Lewis Hamilton in a straight-up fight championship in F1's current hybrid V6 engine era, as of which personally I just prefer to call them engines because I really don't see any difference between an engine and a power unit. They're both pretty much the same thing. Lots of people just don't realise that and just call it. I just decided of course that the two words power unit have more have more confusing and overrated supremacy than just saying engine. Personally, I would just prefer it if they would. If they would just say either engine or not so like they used to. Because it would probably make more sense just to call it an engine rather than a power unit. Because it just seems a bit too baffling for me to just call an engine power unit. I mean, they're both pretty much the same thing, but I find it easier to just call it an engine. If you want my complete honest opinion over what I think about F1's hybrid era, I just prefer to call it an engine. I think, to me personally, that's the easier option. And I am seriously hoping to God that this race does not take any longer than it already feels like it's doing at the moment. because I've basically been trying to squeeze this in all day, and yet, oddly enough, my parents were suggesting it be the evening when I do this, but oddly enough, up to this point, because it is basically a Wednesday evening when I'm recording this, why did I shift down to second? But yeah, since it is a Wednesday evening when I am recording this, I just... 
really didn't care about what happened as long as I can just, you know, get to sleep afterwards once I'm done with this. Anyways, continuing with the F1 conversation. The current era of F1 has primarily been dominated by the Hamilton. It's very much the era of where Lewis Hamilton has just become F1's dominator, and no one has officially managed to beat him and no one has officially managed to beat him in a straight up fight ever since. I'm pretty sure this will still be an interesting battle between the two Mitsubishis over who exactly is going to take this position. And other than that, for the moment, I'm just not concentrating on where the road is. I think it has come back to me. I think I think the word I think the word I was looking for. I think I think the word I was the I think the word I was looking for is pessimist. Which I think as far as I know is another word for hater. As far as I know. I think that's what a pessimist is. Sorry, what a pessimist is. But to those of you out there who probably are pessimists for this sort of domination, you can probably understand what exactly F1 has virtually been like. Before this season, where it's basically just been dominated by the Mercs without any questions without any questions even behind closed doors. And well, the season so far has not officially had a decided on which constructor has won the championship yet, but I'm hoping both battles will manage to go down to the wire, considering it'll basically be the first time since like when was the last time they actually had a Constructors' Championship go down to the wire? Was it in like 2010 when that happened? Was it like 2010 or 2012 when that happened? I honestly don't know. Well, I think it was like 2010 when that happened, but it was probably before that. The last time they had both a Constructors' and Drivers' Championship go down to the wire. I think it was like 08 when that happened. At least I think it was 08. Because that was another typical Ferrari McLaren battle. Also, furthermore, speaking of McLaren, it is nice to see. Also, furthermore, speaking of McLaren, it is nice to see them back within the victory circle once again amongst the hands of the Rick Bobby of the sport, Daniel Ricciardo, or the Honey Badger of the sport, as they call him. Oh, by the way, I would like to remind you of say Daniel Ricciardo. McLaren did recently manage to get a win at Monza, and I think there were many people amongst the die-hard fans who were satisfied with that result. And, oh shit, my eyes are burning. Probably because I've not been blinking this whole time. And probably also the main reason why I'm not sticking to the race line. Because I have not been blinking. Okay. I 
think I have managed to adjust both of my retinas and hopefully over the next hopefully I've managed to adjust both my corneas and my retinas over where exactly my eyes need to be and hopefully they will not work if I can just remember to So yes, I am yawning because it is pretty late. Most of the time, as I said before, I'm recording this on a Wednesday night, and and time is now already. Well, the time itself is now already quarter past ten in the evening. Pretty much ten fifteen p.m. right now. And yet somehow I'm still doing this. Although I figured this would be the sort of risk I would have to take because I cannot allow this to be an interference. Over what exactly? Over what exactly? has already been part of the sadistic torture of me just trying to get this game done with. And I'm hopeful in saying that I can manage to get this game done, possibly before the end of next week, but again, that will be difficult, because I will have to get through Clean up races first before I do Formula GT. And that will of course be a four part championship because, well, there will be a separate segment for the final race. Well, I'm not going to reveal what that is until I've uploaded the video itself. You know, just to keep you as the viewers on your toes and knowing what exactly it is I'm going to plan on doing. that, you know, segment, if you can put it that way. And suddenly, my microwave Neil is starting to say hello to me because Although, at least I've had some water to keep my voice rolling before I record the video itself. Because I like to provide in game commentary with the game recipients. It's what I do. Well, I do it very uncharismatically, but yeah, it's what I do. Anyways, 13 laps are now complete, and already the Nissan is now in the pits, I think, once again, for the second time now, because I would assume he's already made his first pit stop on lap 6, as far as I know, which has basically been the order of the rhythm, just basically, you know, pitting in every 6 laps. Unless that is his first pit stop, but I'm doubtless in saying it probably isn't. But I'm doubtless in saying that it probably is not. 
and again, because his mileage on the tyres has literally been that much more superior, that, I would personally think, is the main reason why he's just been dominating. So, up to this point, I would say I've got no challenges. So, because this is another circuit where the AI's competence is lacklustre, ultimately that does of course come into connection to why exactly I've just been dominating this race so much. Personally. Well, personally, I would think that probably is, you know, just the main reason why I've been dominating this race so much. But again, that's just, you know... ...a personal dilemma. And not because of how many of you are probably just telling my domination runs to go to hell. But again, if you think about it and compare it to how long exactly the championship is, you can probably understand why exactly. I chose the Viper over the limited time that I have to actually get through this game whilst also trying to combine it with the many other fucking things that I have to do with myself by the time September usually gets here. Basically, a target that's always that's already been fucking acquired once September starts. Because I basically know very well that I have to organise myself, and that's why I'm trying to get through this. And yes, hopefully before the end of the month, I will have managed to complete the game. And even though you will probably not see it on the playlist, you will of course see my stats on when exactly I completed this game. Because obviously that is something I will do. Anyways, going to be 16 laps in the books this time around. Anyways, this time around it's going to be 16 laps in the books. I now overlap the Evo 7 once again. Sorry, the Evo 6. No, wait, hold on, there's two of those. And yep, there goes my oil gauge. Sorry, there goes my oil pressure. Okay, let me correct myself. I have now overlapped the RS Evo 6 for the second time in this race and already up to this point now I am officially two laps ahead of both the Evos and I'm now coming up to overlapping my fellow snack once again which is the Mustang going round the outside and up into Putting another opponent that I know of two laps down, making a little bit of contact there with the skyline as I try to overlap him, but it's fine. Because the Cobra is unchallenged for third position up to this point. Or 
whereas the Skyline is trying its hardest to hold on to fourth position. And I am very much adamant in saying the team will probably manage to achieve that, but again, we'll just have to wait and see to be sure. Meanwhile, both of the Lancer Evos are now in the pits once again, as I now have 17 laps on the board. And I am hopeful, and I am hopeful in saying that in just two laps time, that will officially be the end of part one in this championship. And you know what? I think I will save this replay. Actually, no. No, I don't think I'll... Yeah. I thought about doing it, but I've decided in the end that I'm going to it too, because I don't think there will really be that many good shots I'll get of this thing. It's just a question of knowing if I will or not do it. Considering the most recent replays I've been saying, I've been saving, they've basically been in the data. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fuck it, why not? I'm just gonna save this replay anyway. I mean, I was questioning myself and saying if I was gonna do it, but I think this probably is where I'll do it. Because, like I said before, with the lack of. clickbait imagery that I have on the reverse course of Route 5. And hopefully I will manage to set myself up for a reasonable image under the lights. race has taken me nearly half an hour to get through. From what I can understand. So I reckon this race will take me just over half an hour to complete, as of which I've already done up to nearly 29 minutes of driving up to this point, and I have now driven around about 191 miles by now. Possibly 192 up to this point. Right, final lap. And this will also be the final lap of part one of this championship. So, just more or less doing what I have been doing. And it looks as though the skyline is going to finish ahead of the snack. For the first time in this championship, and of course, it probably is the sort of podium boosting motivation that he'll need to stay ahead of the two Lancet Evos. Because he did, of course, finish fifth last time, last time out in a row. And I think this probably is the sort of confidence booster he's needing to keep himself. Up in fourth in the championship, and I've officially driven 193 miles now this car. Pretty much. And I have now passed the half an hour mark, and I don't think I'm going to overlap the Z a second time, because he's already passed the start finish line. There's no real point in going for it. My front tyres are close to being shot anyway, I can barely turn through the corners. So, I'm just gonna do the only appropriate thing and that's just cross the line. Alright, four races in a row. I have won. Which, like I said before, is the same as a NASCAR streak.
Alright, so, there we go. And once again, it's another race where I end up overlapping most of the field twice, except for the Nissan Z concept, who manages to stay only one lap down in spite of my domination. And it took me just over 30 minutes to finish that race. Well, 30 and a half minutes, I should say. And up to this point, I would probably say the top four positions have been decided already, but the only real fight in this championship that's actually going on is between the two Man City Evos. Because I'm pretty sure I will finish first in every race, and the Nissan Z will probably finish second in each of these races. That's all I can really say for sure. And, uh, actually, yeah, I will overwrite this, um, replay, just because I don't have that many shots at Route 5 Reverse. Okay. And so, that will conclude Part 1 of this championship, and next time we shall be doing Part 2. So I shall see you in part two.